Welcome back, football fans. There are a lot of really good teams, and it's, it's just one of those times. It's going to be fun, man, and, I, and I've, I've been... A lot of style, a lot of speed, a lot of talent across the board. He's, you know, he's that general out there that's that, uh, and he can sling it. And. Welcome back, South Jersey football fans, to New Jersey football fans, the South Jersey Football Frenzy Show. It's been a week off. I want to apologize. Uh, my health got in the way last week. Had a little bit of a little bit of a virus, Mac, and uh, I quarantined. I've I feel like I'm back to my normal self, which is scary for everyone else. But it's a day after Halloween. Uh, how are you, Mac? I'm good. I'm good. You know, exciting, right? This is a the crazy thing is getting used to playoff football this early you know i was talking to my kids about it my wife about it it's like we used to not start this round the first round of playoffs wasn't until november teachers convention weekend what november 10th 11th whatever that is um but as we know there's there's a culmination you know with true state champions i mean i spent a long i spent some uh, my stepson who just got in back from the marines now he's officially out I had to give him the whole new breakdown of the whole new world, Rod. Yeah. Everything. Like, how many teams in it? How many have to win? And, he, you know, he has two rings from Shawnee back in the day. So he, he's been through the process. So it was interesting how to, he's like, well, get, you know, the central, the south. But, you know, it's great. There's more, more teams have a shot, more teams are in it, and there's an ultimate champion at the end. Yeah, I think this is the best week of football traditionally, this sectional semifinal weekend. A lot of good games, a lot of big matchups. Um, I think that first round gets a little bit watered down nowadays, and, and now it's uh, it truly, you know, you got four contenders mostly left in each bracket. Well, it watered down, but, you know, I was, again, explaining the whole, and I think we talk about this every year when I do this. We didn't do it last week, is the whole, what the state has done with the, south, the central and the south, down south, and north one, north two, you know, you do in each grouping, mm -hmm. five, four, three, two, one, you're getting the best 16 teams. Yeah. Um, I still always complain. I don't like the names of the, I mean, I don't know why we don't call it South One, South Two. I'll keep saying it. I don't know. They call it North One, North Two up there. I mean, there's no geographic. I think after the way we've seen some of these results go, I think they want to make Central Jersey feel involved in these playoffs. <laughs> um, I, I do want to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rim shot. I want to um, apologize for not being here last week, but I do want to shout out Rod. Rod did a great job filling in last week. Different vibe, but awesome show. It's Thank you show. for filling in and, and stepping up, man. As always, I uh, appreciate it. Appreciate it. It was, a, it was a good time. It was a little different. It was. Um, you yeah, know, no one to yell at. <laughs> listen, nobody to yell at. You're running. You're running That's the right. floor by yourself. You know, you're looking to pass the ball. I, nobody to dish it off to to That's get right. a drink of water. Nothing. It was just. It was raw and uncut. I hope people enjoyed it. Um, well, now you kinda, know how Michael felt. Yeah, right. yeah. MJ, he could just he just took, take it by himself. <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> thank you again, Rod, and thank you everybody for tuning back in and and for all the well wishes. Uh, you know, I wasn't feeling well, and I had a lot of people reach out and and wish me the best. So. Thank you all for your concern. Um, first off, let's talk about our presenting sponsor here, the West Jersey Football Coaches Association, established to promote, improve, and unite football in South Jersey. And in less than three years, the association's done just that. They created the Battle at the Beach and have dedicated themselves to helping others. 
The association has donated more than $50,000 to date to provide scholarships through the National Football Foundation and the Touchdown Club of Southern New Jersey. The group has also donated to the charity Philly Faces, which helps those in need of facial reconstruction surgery. Thank you to the West Jersey Football Coaches Association for your sponsorship of the show. Also want to shout out Dave O'Sullivan, Glory Days, South Jersey Glory Days, sjglorydays.com. Uh, you're watching him on Facebook on his page here. Thank you, Sully, um, for all that you've done for not just ourselves and giving us a platform here, but also all South Jersey high school athletes are very grateful for your coverage. Um, first, let's talk about the elephant in the room. I know somebody mentioned it here in the chat. Last week in Group 3 on Saturday afternoon, Eastside beat Highland 33-13. to um, Yesterday, and, and if you're listening to this uh, later, Tuesday at 5 p.m. it was announced that Camden Eastside is disqualified from the playoff. They had an ineligible player on the team. Uh, sad situation. But I will say that uh, due to the rules, some have asked, well, why wouldn't Seneca just automatically end up in the final? If you have an ineligible player, that game counts as a loss. So Eastside lost that game one to nothing due to the ineligible player. And Highland uh, will... Even though they lost, technically they didn't lose in reality now. They will play at Seneca, and we will preview that game uh, moving forward. Weird situation. Seems like every year at this time in the playoffs, there's always something that comes up somewhere that is an oddity. And um, it's a shame. certainly that was. It's a shame. I mean, in this, you don't like that these things that happen, right? I mean, there's right. Why, that's why there's some checks and balances in the processes, yeah. and, you know, the rules are the rules. and. Um, you know, and, and I'm, I'm sure when the state came down, they don't like having to put some of this stuff down. But and, and you know, especially when they won handedly too. I mean, you know, looking at it, you know, both sides of it, it it's it, it, it got it has to be frustrating. <clears throat> yeah, for Highland, yeah, you collected all the equipment and then you had to dole it back out. You're playing again after after you lost. It's not every <laughs> that's an unusual situation as well. Um, we will touch on that matchup. We're going to talk about every matchup that includes a South Jersey team in the playoffs uh, in today's show. The first segment we're going to do is after this one, we're going to go into groups one and two. Then we're going to do groups three, four, and five. Uh, we got our nod of the week is going to be somewhere in there. And we're going to talk about the non-publics, and we're going to touch on our game of the week this week. So as I said, a lot to cover. We're going to be going backwards a little bit here with some stuff that we would have had in the full playoff preview last week. Bear with us this week as we get through everything you need to know with the biggest football weekend of the season. The game of the week, Mac, last week I was able to get out, masked up uh, to Washington Township. Rod was there. We saw the Minutemen. Uh, they moved to 8-2. They beat Atlantic City 43-14. Uh, to 14. This is Washington Township's first playoff win since 2011. Key play in the first half here, Mac, fake punt. Late in the first half, kind of right. changes the game. Township was down 14-7 to at the time. They go in and score, miss the extra point. It's 14-13. Get the ball back, get a field goal late, 16-14. to That fake punt and the ensuing touchdown started a 36-point unanswered run for the Minutemen. And you got to give a shout-out to our guy Scavetta, the back. Rod, he was outstanding, man, wasn't he? I mean, he ran for 197 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, he he had a big time run just straight up the middle of the field. It kind of broke the game open for eighty uh, yards, I think. Township. It was. Yeah, it, it was. It was a close game, but once they got their running game going, that changed everything. It right. was. It was. It's, I'll tell you, it, downhill. It, fake, yes. fake punts can get you in high school, right? I mean, at, at the high school level, a fake punt and then to go to score, it's such a backbreaker, right? Mm -hmm. Your kids. You, know, you got a lot of kids playing both ways. Um, it's always we talked about. We've talked about in the past. It's it's more tiring to play defense. So your defense is trying to get off the field and they don't. And and then you get that emotional momentum going. Mm -hmm. You score. And, you know you come back. You get the field goal. And like you said, downhill. Town, and that's what Township wants to do. They want to they want to be up on you. They want to get to the next yeah. level. You know those, you know those three, four yard runs, the two, three yard runs become five, six, become yeah. eight, nine. They just keep boom, boom, and you know to their credit on their staff too, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Keep doing yeah. what works. 
You and I both know Frank Holmes, uh, been around a long time. He loves the power run game. He's on staff at Washington Township, saw him after the game. And I'm sitting there looking at Scavetta, uh, 44. I think it's Giuliano Scavetta, and I'm looking at him, and he's got kind of this, this little bit of a longer mop. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a mullet, but, you know, it's a longer mop, curly. And I'm sitting there, and I said, this guy looks just like Riggins. Yeah, you did. Riggo. He, this is him. <laughs> And he does kind of look like him. And uh, so I go up to Frank. I said, 44 kind of reminds me of Riggins. And this is how you know it's a power run game guy. Frank Holmes goes, one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> if you love John Riggins, you well, love to run well, downhill, I, I, I man. Thought, I thought some people were going to be like the kid from the Friday Night Lights TV show no. or, the, or the Redskins slash Jets slash yeah. Beast. <laughs> uh, well, and then Rod said to him, why do you wear 44? And he said his, his pop, I think, told him to wear it. And eventually, mm -hmm. but he said the reason that he wears it is now he loves wearing it is because tough players wear 44. Yeah, yeah the history of the, of the number 44 goes back a long time. Yeah. You know, the two guys at Syracuse, Ernie Banks, and then, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's the. It's, it's, a, it's a history of that 44. That so. Well, I mean, you can. Um, was it was it was Mark Van Egan? What was he? I, he might he might have been thirty. I think he was thirty. But I think of those tough fullback types wearing that. Mm -hmm. The cat from uh, San Francisco. He's he's in that right. Juice check. Is it Juice check? Forty four. Yeah. yeah. There's some nasty dudes that wear forty four. Yeah. Right. Was, I mean, that was a huge game for him. That was his first game back coming off of an injury too. Yeah. And to put up the numbers that he was able to put up in that game was really huge. Oh yeah. Really yeah, big. he had an abdominal injury earlier in the year. We saw their team change their approach running the ball. At that mm -hmm. point, Jared Zergowski, De Zergowski went in. I'm sorry for mispronounced that, Jared. Went in at running back. Right. And now they have kind of a, a two-headed monster there running the ball. Um, big win for Schatz when we've talked about him in the past, and, and they had a lot of close but not quite a big win for them to get in the playoffs, beating an Atlantic City team. Certainly had a lot of offensive firepower. They did it with authority. They're on a six-game win streak. Uh, they host Rancocas Valley uh, this week in the playoffs, and, and we'll talk about that game. Um, just just one yeah. thing. I want to get a township coach and their staff and everybody uh, a huge shout-out. He, he told me that they watch uh, and they enjoy the show. So, you know, thank you guys for tuning in. Well, when you win six in a row and you win the first playoff game <laughs> in right. 2011. You want to tune in. You're like, yeah. hey, they're, gonna, they're probably going to – <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably, yeah, probably saw a little township love. Yeah, yeah, and the you know last time we were there, or last time I was there, there was a hail mary, and uh, one of the assistant coach Hearn, the assistant coach, did his slide through the end zone. Uh, there was no sliding. Uh, they, they they could kind of just like sit back and relax. Big pick for Deshaun Long in that game. Also was the hero when they played Winslow. So things are feeling good down in Washington Township in front of the water tower. We'll see what happens this week in the semifinals. Canton was going. The cannon was going. They almost ran out of powder, didn't they, Rod? I mean, 43 points. There was a lot of booming. Yeah, it's something about that cannon. And no matter how many, listen. <laughs> you don't that's, know. You, you know, I, when can... I, I grew up on a cannon, right? <laughs> you, know. Um, you know, Camden, Plan Township, you hear the cannon. I, I, I can't get used to no. it. Like, no. You can't Rod, anticipate it. I like. know it's happening. You know they score. <laughs> you know it's coming. You know it's coming. And it, and, because <laughs> I've never coached a township or rooted for township. Right. So every time I hear that... That kind of is not good news when I'm there. Usually, either right. I'm opposing coach yeah. losing, or I'm, I'm a Shawnee parent. I think the line of the night came from Atlantic City Press's Mike McGarry, who said, "By the it, it was it was so much in Washington Township's favor." That by the end of the game, he was even not scared by the cannon no, anymore. They had had so many shots off <laughs> that even he was now ready I, for I it. still jump. I don't know. He, he's a Same. good guy, but I, I still jump. Because you think you know it's coming, and then, <laughs> right, you forget, and then. You know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Logan Perez, another great one, Troy. Great game from Township. Um, I can't wait to talk about their matchup this week and a team that you saw up close last week as well. Um, you know what? It's going to be great. Group five is going to be great. Group four is going to be great. Group three is going to be great. But first, we're going to talk about one and two, which are going to be awesome in their own right. We're going to talk about them right after this in our second segment. So stay tuned for the group one and two, Central Jersey and South Jersey preview. Stay right there. Champions.
enthusiastic. Welcome back, football fans of South Jersey Football Frenzy Show. We got some action here. It's groups one and two uh, in the sectional semifinals. First, we're going to talk about Central Jersey Group 1, Mac. We've got uh, both semifinals in this one include a South Jersey team and a team that's outside the traditional South Jersey area. So we have a vested interest in seeing our teams kind of show up here and hopefully push on to the semifinals or to the final. We have four seated shore goes to one seed at Shalik on Friday night at 7 p.m. Shalik remain unbeaten, 10-0. They beat Audubon 35-0 in the first round. Kanai Simmons, 3 for 5 passing, 46 yards. But 12 carries, 101 yards, and a touchdown. Reggie Allen, 21 carries, 117 yards, two touchdowns. Levi Feeney Childers, 8 carries, 44 yards, and a touchdown. As the Cougars find a way to continue to remain unbeaten. Now, I did have a couple forfeits in there, but they have continued to just get it done week in, week out. They're the one seed. They're going to host a team that has to travel yeah, pretty much like two hours, I think it's going to be for sure, to come down to Shalik. Shore beat Clayton in the first round, 14 to nothing. Uh, Josh Moeller, 48 yards passing, touchdown to interception. They don't throw it a whole lot. Uh, Brendan O'Brien had 14 carries, 65 yards, and a touchdown. The Blue Devils lost last season to Woodbury right. in, I think it was, the sectional semifinals. Um, Shalik and Shore, Mac. Yeah, I mean, I, both teams don't throw the ball very much, right? I mean, right. Um, you had Shalik. But Shalik's got the little bit of the two-and-a-half-headed, two, three-headed monster type yeah. thing. They want to pound it. They want to control the football. Um, you know, good win for Shore. Um, but I, 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 after a two hour ride, that's going to, that's going to be a tough one. Obviously we're, you know, we're our, we are South traditional South Jersey fans, Yeah. but I, 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 you know, I like Shalik in this one a lot. Yeah. And as Hector says, great interview Rod had coach Wilson on his, uh, on the show last week. So be sure to find that, go back and, and watch that great job from him, turn around that program. And now they're in the, in the driver's seat in Central Jersey Group 1 as the one seed. But in the bottom of that bracket is Glasper, the three seed. And they're going to head to South Hunter and Friday at 7 p.m. South Hunter is 9-1. They beat Salem 16-6. to They're out of the big Central Conference. Ryder, Manfredi, uh, two touchdowns. They only carried it three times. Two touchdowns. And Ryan Rampa with a four safety with a sack in the end zone for South Hunter and beating the Rams in a low-scoring battle. Glasper at Keyport at home. Keyport was a team that I, you know, I saw some places. They were one of the best Group One teams in the Shore Conference. Sure, uh, they lost twenty-eight nothing. Christopher Foster, ninety-two yards passing, two touchdowns. Dominic Barr, ninety-two yards rushing, two touchdowns. Amari and Xavier Sab each caught a touchdown. As Glassboro now moves to six and three, they're going to head down to South Hundred and uh, in this other semifinal. You know, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, exactly how South Hunter lines up against Glassboro, but I'll say this, for as young as Glassboro is, they're good up front, their front seven is very good, and they have these skill guys in the Sab brothers that can kind of just get it done like that, and in group one, a couple big playmakers can go along. No doubt, and it was, it was, it's key for having a younger team getting that, that, that playoff win against Keyport, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, you are going to South Hunterton, so, but like you said, you got they got some dudes up front. Yeah, they don't look like your typical eye testing group uh, group one team. Um, they look like group one playoff team, and they got some. And they got like you said, the skill kids, the Sabs. So um, this is this is this would be a good test. 
Should be a good game in South yep. Jersey, Group 1. You know, some compelling matchups here. In this one, we are absolutely guaranteed a state semifinalist will come from the West Jersey Football League. It's all four of these teams are in the league. Uh, you got five seeded Pensgrove goes to Woodstown on Friday night. The top seed of Wolverines at 7 p.m. Woodstown seven and two. They beat Denellen last week, 42 to six. Bryce Vel Belafonte, 168 yards rushing, four touchdowns. He caught a touchdown. Alex Torres ran for one as well. Pensgrove is five and five. Uh, they handed Florence their only loss of the season. Coach for Poland his 50th season's ousted from the playoffs. It's Pensgrove wins this one. In a very Pensgrove score this year, six to three. Uh, Karan Caesar, ten carries, eighty-one yards, and a touchdown. He had the game-sealing interception as well. Bryce Wright, one hundred and thirteen yards rushing. Uh, Pensgrove and Woodstown played a few weeks ago. It was twenty-one-six Woodstown, Salem County rivals. They're going to meet again in that side of the bracket. Division foes, very familiar. Tough place to play Woodstown on Friday night, though. Rematches are tough, man. Yeah, rematch, especially especially when they're. Closely, you know, it wasn't a it wasn't a forty to nothing game, right? Right, and you know these guys know each other, play each other, um, respect each other, but they know it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a rock fight, fist fight, all out. I mean this kid, this game this game might be three two, right? <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> uh, well, Pensgrove's won two games this season where they scored six points. And that's not easy to do, especially no. when the opponents were Glassboro and Florence. So they beat Glassboro 6 nothing earlier in the season. They won this game 6-3. Uh, they're going to rely on their defense. And, you know, on the other side of things, we've got a team with a high-flying offense. It's seven-seeded Burlington City. Now, I don't know much about formulas and PowerPoints and all this stuff, but I'll tell you this. Anytime there's a seven-seed that goes on the road to a two-seed, and wins that game 60 to 15. Um, if there hasn't been some type of outbreak of cholera or something on the opposing team, it sounds like that's wrong. Cholera. Uh, uh, I guess Middlesex, uh, Virginia. They finished seven and two. Uh, Bronin City, uh, you know, I, I mistakenly tweeted out the score <laughs> was 40 something to whatever, and um, a lot to a little. And then Coach Booker informed me that was just a halftime no, score. No, no, it was yeah, actually you, sixty you, to fifty. You forgot the rest. <laughs> uh, Aiden Shanzi, eight for eleven, two fifty-eight, three touchdowns passing. Uh, he ran for four. Malachi James caught one. Uh, huge game for the Blue Devils. Like I said, they're eight and two now, and they will travel to Woodbury and get their taste of that ten thirty a.m. start on Saturday. The third seed of Thundering Herd beat Riverside forty to eight. Jaden Johnson, 224 yards passing, three touchdowns. He's moved into the quarterback role. He's done a nice job there. Ibn Muhammad, four receptions, 144 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick six. Now, Woodbury didn't take a snap on offense in the second half. That's a new one, right? That, that's, that's, that, that's, tough. that's tough to do. Wilson Torres, kickoff return touchdown. Wilson Torres, punt return touchdown. Ibn Muhammad, that pick six. That was it. It's knots all around. That's all you need, right? Could be. A, I mean, this looks like it. You know, I, I might have to get out on Saturday morning and see this one. I don't know, man. Burlington City at Woodbury, 10.30 a.m. In this semifinal matchup of any of these teams. If Burlington City and Pensgrove played earlier in the season. Burlington City won that game on the road, 33-21. Woodstown beat Woodbury in overtime. Uh, Woodbury beat Pensgrove pretty handily early in the season. Um, Woodstown and Burlington City would be the only one that, that don't have that familiarity, this is, but this is great. This is this is right up your alley. Right? Oh yeah, this man. Is, this, this is Group is One. Group One just cooking, isn't it? Right. Hundred percent. Yes. You got it. Hundred percent, man. I mean, South Jersey takes such pride in Group One, and for good reason. Absolutely. I mean, they they got they're loaded. They're loaded. And these teams right here, when you look at last year, what happened? Woodbury beat Mountain Lakes uh, by a lot of points in the state championship. Uh, I don't remember exactly the score. I know. I know. Our guy Derek Moore does, but these four teams are saying, like, we win this one. Yes. We can win it all. Right, right. Like, right. this is, guys, this is, we're here. You yeah. come out of this bracket right, right here, right. you've got a great shot at winning it all. Now, I know Glasper and Shallock are saying that on the other side, so sure, and South Hunter but as it well. Look, but it, it looks to be shaped up that this side of the bracket is 
gonna be the juggernaut. Like you gotta get through this gauntlet here, and the one who gets through the gauntlet will be the battle tested one. Right. Not saying not to slight the other side, the other the other section, but it's uh yeah. And do not sleep on the walking taco at Woodbury if you're going there. Even if it's ten thirty in the morning. I mean we'll call it brunch. Yeah. How about, brunch. how about Vic? How about uh, Vicarelli now playing some receiver? Playing right? some receiver. I mean, he's, he's an athlete. He was out with the injury. Now we bring him back, put him on the field, right? Another guy, another dude. 31-7 was the score last year. Derek, thank you, Derek. I knew you have that. But styles make fights. You talk about styles make fights here. Uh, Woodstown and Pensgrove, Woodbury, Burlington City. Uh, you know, very different mentalities on these teams in terms of approach. I'd look at Burlington City, the speed, uh, playmaking skills, especially on the outside. Woodbury has that as well. Uh, Woodbury also, they can kind of run it, uh, pass it, do what they want to do. They've been good up front traditionally. Then Woodstown, you know how they want to play. Uh, they're going to come right at you, run the football with Belafonte. And Pensgrove, they're saying, look, our defense, this is where we want to make our hay. Um, Listen, it sets, it sets, nice, nice contrast. It sets up well. If you go Friday night, you can get in bed early. If you go Saturday, you, you know, it's going to be you, – you, you, I don't think they'll run out of daylight. Start at 10.30. No, no. No. Not even this time of year. <laughs> right? No. But, but that's going to be not, – that's, that's going to be a – it's going to be a little bit of a shootout, obviously. Yeah. And interestingly enough, Rod and I were talking about this before the show – it, it could be very a very interesting situation if Woodstown wins and, let's say, Shalik wins. Um, if the top seeds prevail, the Group 1 sectional semifinals, both of them, will be Friday nights. They won't be on Saturday. Right, they're not used to that. Traditionally, those games are usually a, a Salem, a Paulsboro, uh, a Woodbury hosting, a uh, Pensgrove. Yep. They're Saturday Games and those correct, so that's you know that's rare around here. Central Jersey Group Two, uh, fifth seeded Cinnamons, and they've only lost one game this season. And it was to Seneca. They're going to head to Point Pleasant Borough Friday at seven p.m. Borough is eight and one. They beat eight seeded Spotswood fifty four to seven. Jake Croce ran eight times for one hundred eighty two yards and five touchdowns. That's how you know you're a one seed. Uh, you can get that kind of line. Matt Oliphant. Four carries, 92 yards, and a touchdown. Cinnaminson is 9-1. Like I said, only loss was to Group 3 Seneca. They defeated New Providence 14-0. Brian Finnerty ran for a touchdown. Dom Del Grippo, 95 yards, rushing and touchdown. And Mike Beers and Massad Gant, Gant each had an interception. The defense has carried the way for Cinnaminson this year. Been very stout, very good. They're going to head to Point Pleasant Borough, who loves to run the ball. On the other side of that bracket, Pleasantville, the three seed, heads to Willingboro, the two seed, Friday night, 7 p.m. This game would be, this one could have some fireworks as well. Um, Willingboro is 8 and 2. They beat Monmouth 42 0. Lamar Best had five incompletions and six touchdowns. That's, that's a pretty good line. Yeah. Uh, good. Terrence Knight in 118 yards, two touchdowns. Jarrell Taylor Jr. Caught two as well. Pleasantville, 8-1. and one. They defeated Johnson just like they did last year in the playoffs, and they were at home. The Greyhounds, 55-22. to 22. Cannot say enough about what Malachi Timberlake has done with this team. They lost the opener to Ocean City down at Battle of the Beach, and since then they have not lost. Ahmad Jones threw for two touchdowns, ran for one. Khalil Witherspoon, two receiving touchdowns. Khalil, Shepherson, Dwayne Carter, Rashad Floyd all ran for a touchdown. The Greyhounds have really been spectacular. They can score a lot of points. And Willingboro, we know they made the state semifinals last year. They had to go through Point Borough last year. We could see a rematch, but we'll see. Both these underdogs or both these lower-seeded teams in Cinnamonson and Pleasantville have a shot in these games. Oh, absolutely. Don't you think so, Matt? Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I mean, they're, they're across the board, Cinnamonson, you know, it's the, the traditional South Jersey team. But Point Pleasant, they're always, you know, they've – They've always etched in the central finals for years and years. So, um, I mean, they're going to have their hands full, Cinnamon, but and, and the pleasantville Williamboro, that's going to be a fun game to watch, too. Yeah, absolutely. Those are two really good games. And in South Jersey, Group 2, Haddon Heights, the 5 seed. They were part of a great game last week as they beat Oak Crest 14-12. to Drew Harris threw for a touchdown and ran for one. Demir, Outerbridge, Ali, 
Five catches, 52 yards. One of them was the touchdown that Harris threw. And Jaden Trace, two sacks, a game ceiling interceptions. They go down and beat Oakcrest. Now they have a tough task in the reigning state runner-up. Rumsen Fairhaven, a one seed. This game's Friday at 7 p.m. at Rumsen. Rumsen beat DelVal in the first round, 47 to 13. Owen O'Toole was a big part of their offense last year. He's a big part of their offense again this year. He went 14 to 19, 231 yards, three touchdowns, and he ran for one. Jackson Gallagher, 100 yards receiving, two touchdowns. Nick Thomas, 66 yards receiving and a touchdown. Rumsen Fairhaven always there at this point in the season, Mac, whether it's group three, whether it's group two. Here they are. They're going to welcome Haddon Heights. On the other side, a rematch of last year's thriller. It was 14-13 to 13 last year. Gloucester with a signature win for the program. They had a blocked punt. They ran it in with 10 minutes and 55 seconds left to beat Haddonfield. Now they have to go up to Kings Highway right there. They're going to play at Haddonfield Friday at 7 p.m. Haddonfield's 8-1. and one. Their only loss came to Camden. They pounded Raritan last week, 31-7. Declan McCarthy, 260 yards passing, three touchdowns. Dom Hahn, 139 yards receiving the touchdown, a rushing touchdown. Patrick Ryan, Mad Zepetti, each caught touchdowns for the Haddens. Gloucester, they played maybe the most thrilling game of the, of the weekend. Yeah, they, they beat did. Middle Township, 35-31. Mason Widman, 24 carries, 135 yards, three touchdowns. Game ceiling pick, great game for him. Um, Question is how they come back from that, right? Like, I know you got lost. I mean, it, it, I'm not saying it's going to be easy to get up for Haddonfield, right? It should be, right? Crosstown rivals. But when you win an early game like that, you'd, you've had to kind of pull that some of that over-emotion, mm-hmm. um, you know, to, to do that as a three-seed, right? Uh, sure. Yeah, they were the three-seed. So, um, you know, middle, middle good team. But I, I don't know if Gloucester thought that they would be in that type of dogfight first round, but... They were very entertaining. Now they got to, you know, get back on the horse, so to speak. And, they, you know, and then they're going to have the perennial, you know, Frank Delano and staff. They're, you, you know, you, you can pencil them every year at this, at this point of the uh, season, right? Sectional finalists or semifinalists. And uh, so they, they've, they've seen this movie. So interesting. Heck of a game last year. I don't think many maybe predicted Gloucester to win that game last year, although it was a Gloucester, and they came away with the win, and they found a way. Uh, this year, it's at Haddonfield. I think Haddonfield being able to pass the ball here last week with McCarthy. I mean, had a great game, good numbers. Um, you know Dom Hahn and is going to be able to run the ball a little bit. This, we'll see what where the versatility comes into play here. Last year was settled on a special teams play. We always talk about that. Special teams, turnovers, field position. Um, yeah, we'll see. This one, you know, I think all the screws are going to be tightened when, yeah. when this game comes As forward. As the playoffs progress, you know, maybe a one verse eight or a two seven special teams turnovers aren't as – but as you go up this ladder, you know, it's a field position, all that boring stuff that – yeah. You get I get eye rolls and things like that, but defense, flipping fields, et cetera, et cetera. Chris Baker's right. That game was at Haddonfield last year. It wasn't at Gloucester. I'm thinking about Willingboro at Gloucester in the final because I think they upset Point Borough in the semis, right. and then they went to Glo- Gloucester for the final right. and beat Gloucester there, mm-hmm. right? It's a good thing you got people che- checking you, right? I guess. Thank you, Chris. Chris on top of it. Um, That's groups one and two. Again, a lot of good action, a lot of things worth watching, and we do have that guaranteed state semifinalist to come from South Jersey. That would come out of the group that is, what is this, South Jersey group one. That's Pensgrove, Woodstown, Bronin City, and Woodbury are in that group. Um, Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. After this, we're going to go and look at groups three, four, and five in Central and South Jersey, weigh all the matchups, and, you know, we'll have some, we'll have some laughs along the way. Mac, what do you think? I think it's time to maybe loosen up a bit. <laughs> Whatever you Too want much to... info, man. My... Two-week backlog. Oh, I wish we were here last right. week. You're giving all the all, – you just you got to get the facts in. Got to get the facts in, but, you know, laughs come too. Um, can't wait to talk about three, four, and five compelling matchups, big heavyweight teams, some of our top teams, some matchups looking ahead if they play out. We've been waiting for all season. So stay tuned. We'll be back previewing those groups right after this.
SRA. South Jersey, let me tell you about my friends over at SRA Home Products. SRA has been building sunrooms, pergolas, patio covers for over 25 years. They built more than 9,000 projects in the Delaware Valley. And I've had the opportunity to be around owner Mike Fody. I have nothing but the best things to say about Mike and his crew. SRA is a gold accredited member of the Better Business Bureau under the elite provider status with Home Advisor. And they've racked up a ton of Best of South Jersey awards in the past. They contribute to multiple sport associations and are huge supporters of Williamstown football. Find them online, srahomeproducts.com. All right, Mac. Uh, we said we were going to get some laughs in, but this is no laughing matter. Uh, the Battle of the Creeks in Central Jersey, Group 3. Fourth-seeded Cedar Creek Pirates are headed to top-seeded and undefeated Timber Creek. This is quite a matchup. Friday at 6 p.m. Timber Creek, as I said, undefeated. They beat Robbinsville 42-12 to last week. Victor Okendo, 15 of 19, 444 yards passing and six touchdowns. That's pretty good, Mac. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's pretty good. I, I saw he got there – was, there was a video. He was a part of uh, the Jersey Sports Zone top performances of the week. There was a lot of media people really shouting him out. Big win for Timber Creek there. And his performance, incredible. Marcus Upton, three catches, 156 yards, two touchdowns. <laughs> That's 30, unbelievable. I know, I know. It's 30, 30 yards per re- reception, yes? It's, it's a lot. Well, almost. 30. And Karan Brookings, five receptions. Brookings, I'm sorry, five receptions, 154 yards, two touchdowns. Last year, the first round, third-seeded Timber Creek lost at home to six-seeded Cedar Creek. Cedar Creek is back uh, in this game as a four-seed. Timber Creek, the one seed. So both teams have gotten better off last year in terms of the seeding. Cedar Creek, 7-3 and three now. They beat fifth-seeded Wall, 33-20 to 20 out of the short conference. Billy Smith, 16-23, 338, five touchdowns. I mean, between the two of these guys, I mean, they pretty much threw for, what, more almost seven, what, 800 yards last week and 11 touchdowns? These should be some fireworks. Aleem Parks. Six catches, 121 yards, a touchdown. Darius Benjamin, six receptions, 117 yards, two touchdowns. Um, it was 28-7 last year when they played at Timber Creek. Battle of the Creeks again. Mac, what do you think? Well, there's going to be some passing going on. <laughs> now, the it's question, a lot colder this Friday than it was last Friday. Now, the question is, is there going to be some pass defense being played? I mean, look, first round, I, again, I'm – you got a lot of info here, a lot of facts, a lot of stats, right? When it comes down to playoff wins, you know, it's it's who can stop who. Can you play defense? Can you show up? Sure. Um, you know, I mean, both 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 staffs are watching film. They're, you know, they're going to they're gonna do what they do. They're going to be, you know, like high school. I don't want to say simple, but, hey, let's, let's, let's get their guy. Let's stop their guy. Let's stop. But, you know, but when you got a quarterback slinging for 444, right? But on the other side, Smith with three, 338, I mean – Again, it's going to be – looks like some points are going to be put up. But on the flip side, if the team shows up and plays some defense, you know, that, you know, tips and overthrows end up becoming problems. I can't agree. I mean, I agree with all that. Yeah. I, I think, you know, in a game like this, Timber Creek has been the man this year. I mean, they have found a way to win close. They've found a way to win big. Uh, they're a big team. They're physical at the line of scrimmage. They've got some great players. Cedar Creek, on the other hand, has cobbled things together here. They're getting healthy at the right time. We've seen that the last couple weeks. And they played a team in Wall that's usually pretty physical as well, and they beat them. Um, I do think we'll see, you know, the run game is going to be pivotal this week for everybody because well, it is going to be cold. Well, we, and we, we talk about that, right? Like, you always, it's like the other guy, the other thing. You know, how when you watch these playoff games – can that other person or other, you know, like can can the run game take yep. care of business, right? If you if if both teams decide to drop drop eight and, and rush three or whatever, or you know, if you got three three man fronts, you know, you, you, I would think some guys are going to run the ball, but that's what why do you think, bro? Um, uh, looking at this game and watching both teams, we've been watching them since the battle at the beach. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to figure out which Creek team is going to show up. And when I say Creek, for this 
point. Both of them. I'm going to say Timber Creek, which Timber Creek team is going to show up because they sh- they have shown that they can run the ball. Mm-hmm. Um, they've had games where they didn't throw much at all, where they kind of just, you know, ground and pound. Right. The last couple of games, they've been kind of airing it out, throwing it up. They, they have some really big, long receivers mm-hmm. um, that are really good. So I'm trying to figure out how they're going to come into this game um, and then looking at Cedar Creek, uh, they've had their issues with stopping the run. Mm-hmm. Um, most games, the games that they have lost have been against, you know, pretty good run teams. Yeah. Um, their back end is really good. So right. I'm trying to figure out which team is going to show up. It's going to be Creek versus Creek. Uh, Creek wins this one, I think. Creek probably loses this one. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I think... These two teams, I think last year, Timber Creek season rolled on uh, in a way where they were winning some close. I mean, they had a great season. And I don't think anybody at the beginning of the season was circling them and saying, watch out for Timber Creek this season. Mm-hmm. Uh, Coach Wright's been able to build a program here that now, you know, this year we expected that. And when we saw them beat Highland in the opener, we knew mm-hmm. they, were, they were a pretty physical, very good team. Right. Yes. So to come back to the scene of the crime last year and play the same team again, I think is is a great uh, a great thing for a team like that yeah. because now okay we know we did last year and here we go we can push forward this year and get rid of that uh, memory of the past. Now for Cedar Creek, then those guys know we came in here last year and won this game. So I I agree with Chris Baker. This is the type of game I would like to see every year. I think they're. Comparable programs, obviously, as, as they match up here. And um, yeah, I, I, this is the Battle of the Creeks, man. The winner gets to hold that title as the right. Creek. Right. And, and the winner's probably, I don't know, does the winner get Camden Well, let's, High? let's talk yeah, about right. that. Last <laughs> week, the winner of this game played Camden High. Right. And uh, that was Cedar Creek, and it didn't go well for Cedar Creek. And this year, the winner could very well play Camden High. The third seeded Panthers are headed to Homedale. Friday at 7 p.m. Uh, Camden beat Carteret 27 to 7 last week. Makai Bronson threw for a touchdown and ran for one. Azir Lee had two picks. Richard James, Nasir Blackney, Joshua Steely combined for three sacks and three tackles for loss in that stingy defense. Camden High. Home Dell beat Matawan 21 to 7. Um, Matt Iolo, I hope I pronounced that right, 10 carries, 109 yards, and a touchdown. Undefeated Hornets out of the Shore Conference, Home Dell. Camden High is a great defense. Let me just tell you what Camden High is. Average score in-state. We forget about that Lake Taylor loss in Virginia. In-state, their average score is about 35-5, to 5, Camden High, this season. So, Homedale's average score is about 31-3. to 3. Homedale's allowed 27 points this season. They went uh, like six weeks without giving up a point. Um, one of the teams they shut out was Manasquans, a pretty good team. This is going to be a... I don't know, man. What do you think? Maybe some defense. I think Cam's yeah, good. No, I, I mean, look. <laughs> the Hornets and the Panthers, man. Right, listen, I'm, I'm by South Jersey, right? I think Camden's going to – I think they're going to beat up on them. I mean, I, it's just – there's my South Jersey coming out, you know. But I just I, both teams, yes, they, they have some good defenses. Camden high. Um, but then Camden high can score on you too, right? Right. Brunson can do some things. I mean – um, I, I don't know. I don't think it's going to be a, a, a. I don't think that they can score with Camden. I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not that. even going to talk about the offensive side of things. I think, <clears throat> you know, you read the stat 100 yards rushing. Yeah. That's cool and all. But with this Panther defensive line, that's going to be a tough day. And then you have Blakeney in there at the middle linebacker who's been there the last couple of years. This defense is is legit. So it's not going to be as easy for uh, Homedale to, to, to win this game. Cam is not, <laughs> well, Cam is not Madawan. <laughs> Wants to, Correct. You know. And, and Homedale is not Carter Red either. And I give Homedale a lot of credit. They have some a very impressive they, they, season. They've but had a great season. They, I'm not. I'm not disparaging that. Right. I'm I know saying, you're not. I'm on. I'm on the Cam. I'm on the Camden High boat on this one. That's right. all. But I'm going to say this right now. Uh, outside of the top power programs, 
and I'm talking about the top power programs, the top percentile. Uh, and this year, I would say right now, looking at it, Tom's River North, and Rums and Fairhaven, two familiar customers last year. One won a state championship in five, the other finished as a runner up in two. Um, and Red Bank Catholic, Donovan Catholic, and the non pubs. Outside of that, I think when it's very clear over the years that you should probably just lean on the West Jersey League teams in games against a short conference. I think it's been clear, and I think it's spoken for itself. And, you know, it. If, if anybody wants to disprove that over the last five years, I would go through the matchups and look, and I don't think you can. I think if it's a toss-up in seeds, in terms of eh, home and away, forget that. Let's just look at it and say Camden High, eh, if it's a toss-up, maybe you go with the West Jersey League team if, you, if you're into that. Oh, for sure. And they, they have to take that bus ride. Yeah, I mean, look, that's yeah. that's no fun. I mean, it would be nice if you are hosting, et cetera, but um, – yeah, we'll see. I just want to, you know, make note that the first game of the season for Camden, when they took that trip down to Virginia, it didn't go too well for, for the Panthers. No, it didn't. Um, we kind of looked at that as being, you know, trying to judge it. Right. But I think that game taught them a lot. Uh -huh. I think that whole trip taught them a lot and prepared them for this especially off of coming off of a disappointing, you know, game that they would say against Delcy. Hints doesn't want to ever lose. But if you go back, if you dig deep in that Hintz, that Bobby's psychology, mm -hmm. he's okay that first game getting a little yeah. bit well, come, that's where come up. In. Traditionally, that's the case. That's what he does. Because he's like, okay, yeah. guys, you all think, we all think, you think this, you're not that, mm -hmm. do it, let's do it, let's get, boom, 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 bang, and the higher can than high is again. On the other side of uh, that piece, South Jersey Group 3, that Manasquan team I just mentioned, they're the four seed. They're going to head to Delcy Friday at 7 p.m. Delcy rolled past Burlington Township 44-6. Dan Russo, 213 yards rushing, three touchdowns. Wayne Adair, 104 yards and touchdown. Zach Maxwell ran for two as well. Manasquan beat Somerville 14-13. to uh, They had a good game from Julian Wathall. 16 carries, 101 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Delcy has just been rolling, and it's not an easy place to play in terms of Franklin Township, um, Franklinville, however you want to phrase it. The Crusaders looking to get back to that state final. On the other side of this bracket, we have Highland, the seventh seed at Seneca, the three seed. We mentioned this in the beginning of the show. East side beat Highland last week, but they had an ineligible player, so they had to forfeit retroactively. They lost the game. Highland, the seventh seed, goes to Seneca. Uh, Seneca rolled Allentown 51 to 14. Zach Fearon, four touchdowns rushing. Jamar Worth in the touchdown. Kingston Williams, two sacks, two tackles for loss. Last season, these two teams played. I was there. It was in Tabernacle. It was a sectional semifinal. It was a classic 29 to 28. This year, somehow, some way, they're going to renew acquaintances. Leary has coach, uh, Coach Brian Leary, a Highland coach with Bill Fisher at Seneca for many years at Triton. Another round of the pals going at it here, Mac. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's interesting how you – just however it happened, these these matchups tend to just fall in place, right? The, the staffs know each other. And um, last year they – right? They played last year, right? I mean, that was – Yeah, one-point game. 29-28 deal. Um, yeah, Seneca's having a great year, man. They're just really doing a great job. Two years in a row now. Two, I know. He's just – fish is fish – is, Doing a, a really good job, um, you know, going to a Seneca game. It's, you know, they, 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 they're tough kids. They play hard. I mean, um, you know, they, they do, they don't really care about a stat sheet, right? That's not the talk there. It's like, do we get out, do we win, do we lose? Let's, you know, let's get out of Dodge and, that's, and move on. Win in advance. You know, I think last year, you know, you go back to, what we just said about Timber Creek. I think it was similar with Seneca last year. They were a pleasant surprise all season. They were not a team we circled in the beginning and said, this team's going to be here. Right. This year they lose one game to Paul Six by one point, going for two. Other than that, they beat Cinnamon. It's the only team to beat them. Uh, they're a very strong team, Fearon. But last year they lost their quarterback in the sectional final against Camden. They ended up losing to Camden. Um, you know, this year... It feels like things, you know, you're back there and you stay healthy now. You're, you get to do it right. with your team. Yeah. Um, 
and and there's you're not wondering what if. So yeah, it's interesting that they're facing the same team they beat last year. That was a really close game. It could there was a couple things that could have gone either way in that Highland Seneca game last year, and it gone to Highland. If you're Highland. Coming off, like I said, you pick up the equipment, then you reassign it back out. You guys lost by 20 points last week, but really you won. Now you're going to a new life. But you're playing a team that last year you think you probably should have beat. So who cares? Like, let's just go play. Right, and that, I mean, that's a, that is a question. Like, what, what kind of mindset is Highland in, right? House money mindset. That's I mean, what I think, Rob. Right? What do you think? If I'm Highland, we don't have anything to lose. Well, That's right. We are, uh, I get it. Technically, we, we win when we lose. lose. We, right. we, we win when right. we lose. It's so, just, it, I mean, this is a good matchup for yeah. them. I mean, they. I'm not saying that that they're the, they are going to win, but right. I mean, yeah. it's a good matchup for them. Right. I wouldn't if you, be surprised if you get the call. If you, if you brought up by the dead and you get to play again, and you're like, hey, oh, by the way, you get to play the team that knocked you out last That's year right. by a point. Right. right. You're like, oh. <laughs> yeah, and coach, I mean, I'm gonna ask you. You you're in this situation. You you were knocked out. Now you get a call that hey, you're back in. You're not coaching this game tight, right? No, you're letting it letting it fly. No, you're already making that. You know the proverbial tea times. You're already figuring out what's going right. What's going on? You're you're doing your awards, your banquets, your booster club, and all of a sudden you're like, hey, we're it. It's like the ultimate house money. Very loose. Right and. And to steal a line from the great Omar Little, just remember this. Even if they miss, they can't miss. <laughs> They're already here, okay? They're yeah. already here, man. Come yeah. on now. Right. They got, they got, it's like Omar. They, they got, Omar's coming. They're, they're, they got all the money, all the house money. And you know what? That may not matter. I mean, they, right. <laughs> Seneca may say, we don't care about the house money. You exactly. take it back to your well, house. Well, right. They're they're in the base they're in a base but they got a shot they're in a double elimination tournament they're playing in a game they're wrestling back <laughs> yeah exactly wrestle back <laughs> they got a wrestle Pony back tails. going um, in group four Central Jersey right okay so if you talk about Highland and Seneca not exactly close Tabernacles not around the corner from Blackwood but I'll tell you who is Hamilton and Winslow four seated Blue Devils are headed over to Winslow Friday night at six p.m. another one Rod. Yeah. Like, if you have to say, hey, who do we want to match up in this semifinal? Okay, let's do that. Bink. This, this hits on the MAC meter because this is local, right? This should be in a divisional game in your world. Yes. Um, Atco, the Battle of Atco. <clears throat> Winslow, 8-2. and two. They beat Pensalkin last week on Saturday night, 46-14. to 14. Per Kevin Minnick of NJ.com is usually in the chat. I don't know where you're at, Kevin. Uh, Jalen Parker, the freshman phenom quarterback, suffered an elbow injury that keeps him out for the postseason. Deontay Ruffin, back in at quarterback, played well last week. 130 yards passing on 10 of 15. Two touchdowns through the air, ran for two. Cam Miller, two touchdowns receiving. Cameron Brown, 19 carries, 150 yards. They get Hamilton. It's 5-5. Five and five. Hamilton had lost the last game of the regular season to Ocean City by three points at home. They run it back the next week, and they win 23-22. to 22. They snap a three-game losing skid. Kenny Smith, 130 yards on 24 carries, three touchdowns. Drew Craig, only three incompletions, 154 yards. A late score from Smith. And Mac, back on the Mac meter, Gavin Kovacs gets the shout-out. It's his extra point that lifts them. Um, Hamilton, you know, you know Kenny Smith. you got to figure it's going to be a lot of Kenny Smith action, win or lose. He's a guy who probably has to touch this thing 30, 35 times in this game, I would think. Right, but control the football, right? It can you got to get Kenny on the ground? I mean, you, you got to take care. You got to protect the football first, as always. Sounds boring, but then it's going to be a heavy dose of Kenny Smith. And for Winslow, this is right where you want to be. I mean, I think if anybody put truth serum in, in any anyone in this group four, they would say uh, of the three teams here, Winslow. Mainland Millville, I want to maybe be on the other side of the other two, right? And uh, nobody, Winslow, nobody, that's nobody, how nobody's it saying out. it there, but we're saying it here, right? I mean, out of those, if you can, I mean, all year, those three have been the talk in that group four, and then two of them are on the other side of the bracket. Right. It'd be, now the bottom of this bracket, we got Long Branch at Brick Memorial, an all South, an all Shore Conference battle. Uh, Brick Memorial's ten and zero, Long Branch five and four. Friday at six p.m. Brick Memorial handed Morristown its exit ticket, forty-one seven. Long Branch beat Jackson Memorial, 
13 nothing. So all short conference at the bottom of this bracket, the top of the bracket, Hamilton and Winslow. Winslow is the top seed again Friday, 6 p.m. A lot of bragging rights in that area on the line. South Jersey Group 4. Now, we got a commenter here. Our guy Chris Connor says he thought Middletown South maybe thought they'd take care of Shawnee in this game that he saw, but uh, the Renegades were up to the challenge. These two teams were oddly similar in that they'd play the best of their conference, really, came right. away with they, losing records. They both go through or have to go through some really good football teams. Obviously, we know Shawnee's, everybody, you know, they're playing Augie, they're playing Millville, they're playing Wins, they're right. playing all the, the juggernaut. And Middleton South's doing the same thing. It was the same way, Mac, but in this one, Shawnee wins 35-21. Look, I, you know, you're going to read the stats and all that stuff, and, and you know, you, you look at both these programs have gone through our, our playoff, you know, perennial yeah. playoff teams. Sure. Um, you know, Shawnee, there's a lot to be said for knowing how to get on the bus, yeah. drive an hour and a half, and get off the bus and play football. I mean... Some of that stuff sometimes taken for granted, but when, you know, Gush had been doing it for 77 years or a long time, 50, 40, 50 years, these games, you know, they're used to those. Uh, Joe Papa, a really great player, 127 yards, two, two touchdowns rushing. Nick Krasinski, three touchdowns rushing. They each had an interception on defense, so really all-around game for Krasinski and Papa. Now, if, again, if you're Shawnee, you say, look, we've played – uh, Winslow, we've played Cherokee, we've played St. Augustine, we've played, we've played these teams, we've played Millville, and guess what? They get to get on the bus and go play Millville again this uh, week. Right. I mean, not only does that help them, but now that, you know, in that other game, but now they're going back and they're seeing a team that, quite frankly, didn't go well for them last time they met, and that was October 6th, about a month ago. Um, Millville, I want to give them a shout out for beating, you know, they, they really handled Northern Burlington 49-7. Uh, Naeem Sharp, 136 yards rushing, two touchdowns. Lotsier Brooks, 134 yards receiving, three touchdowns. When they played on October 6th, uh, Jacob Zamat threw for 278 and four touchdowns. Lotsier Brooks had 162 yards receiving. Millville wins 38-14, but... Here's the thing that stood out to me looking at that this week, Mac. Shawnee ran for 39 yards in that game on 15 carries. Right. Well, we, well we've talked about Millville's defense. But, look, flip side, this is now, you know, this is, a, this is playoff time a month later. I mean, I'm looking at Shawnee's defense, right? You got Liam Gilmore, right? Yeah. High-energy kid. Beast. Beast, like you know, right? You got Mason Grabowski. You got young Joey Cleaver, but each week getting better, sophomore linebacker. Um, they, you know, they got Rosinski steps up last week. I mean, they got, they got kids that are now, they got a lot of sophomores playing earlier in the season that are now, as we always talk about, sophomores are now juniors, juniors are now seniors, and mm -hmm. seniors kind of like, you know, are part of, the, not part of the coaching staff, but they've been part of the program. They know what this is about. Um, Millville's really good, right? We all, I mean, look, look, we, we've all seen Millville. They are, they are arguably, could be one, two in South Jersey easily. Mm -hmm. They are, right? And they've been there long. So, um, am I saying Shawnee got house money here a little bit, right? I mean, you're, you're going down there, and I don't think anybody's picking Shawnee, right? Nobody. Right. Nobody. Shawnee does have house money. There's I, no question. I have a question. Yeah. A couple years ago, Shawnee won two or three games. We took a bus trip, I believe, down to Millville. With a freshman quarterback. With a freshman quarterback and upset Millville. Yeah, they did. Matty Wellesley, Nate Somerville. Right? Joe Dawson. I mean, they, they came in and they won the sectionals that year. Right. That so was... <laughs> I'm not saying that it's going to happen again, but Listen. hey, pop that tape in. and Right. Well, that's it. That's the thing, right? You, you, you have things to draw on if you're the Shawnee staff, right. right? This is not, they're not like, they're not sitting in that, that room there on Tabernacle way to go. They're not all, I mean... They're concerned about Millville. Yeah, they, yeah, 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 yeah. they're concerned about Millville. Right. But they're not thinking this giant can't be slain, right? They, they've, well, they've done this. Here's the thing. Uh, I agree. You know, Shawnee is one of the best staffs around, one of the best coaches that's coached in South Jersey. Uh, they're always going to have a good game plan, um, and, and their kids are going to execute the game plan that they've given to the best of the ability. You cannot count anybody out, as Amber Smith says here. Everybody's 0-0. I mean, technically, everybody right now is 1-0. But – 
the last three times they played, Millville's won by double digits. Absolutely. They're in the same division. Yep. There's not the familiarity now. They're they might as well be neighbors. Yeah. They play they're playing uh, they're playing once a, they've they've played four or five times in the last four years. But I'm going back to this. Shawnee wants to win this game. They're going to have to find a way to rush for more than 39 yards on 15 carries. Absolutely. And we saw that. We didn't get to talk about this last week because mm-hmm. uh, I was coughing a little bit. But we saw that Millville defense against Cherokee's run mm-hmm. game. And let me tell you what, there was no run game. Right. right. And, and it wasn't for lack of trying. And I got to give a real shout to 17 on Cherokee, Rod. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the guy who yeah. was running the jet sweeps yeah. to keep – the defense honest. I mean, he he took it honest all night. Yeah. Kept getting up. That was a, that was a true well, soldier. But, but what I'm saying is, you're going to have to find a way to run the ball. Well, the one th- look, look, you're. You sit, Am I right? Run the ball? No, 100. percent And you sit there, you sit there, you go like this. You're like, well, we run the ball, we control the ball, we keep Millville's offense off the field, we keep Brooks in the easier said. <laughs> exactly right. These are all things that we all <laughs> we in a perfect all, world. We've right? all sat there and said, "Oh my God, this, we'll just we just get three yards. We don't even want five yards of run. We want three yards of run because right, right. we want every possession. We want every you know, we want three we want three downs for a first. We don't want to have to use two downs for a first. We want the game to be right. condensed. Now, saying that. Um, you know, th- there is a Papa factor. Yeah. You know, I mean, the run game with Rosinski stepping it up last week with, with, with Big Joe Papa. And what they do on offense with Coach Scuderi, and it, it does give teams, you can't just sell, the, the, you can't just sell out to stop the run on Shawnee. Now, Millville's done that. Um, but it, it's almost like, yes, Shawnee, ha- I think Shawnee has to run the ball. But those play actions, those RPOs, those picking, choosing times. Now, is Millville good enough to just put six in a box? And if they can, if they, if Millville can stop the run with six to seven guys, mm-hmm. that's a problem. If they need that eighth guy, I mean, I we we talked right before this show. A different sport. Bobby Knight passed away, and I said. Hmm. Played basketball in high school. My coach was a Bobby Knight advocate or, or a fan of his. And, and so we ran motion and we ran man to man. Well, when you when you got the guys that are better than the guys next to you, when you run motion man to man, you don't have to get too much more simple than that. You're mm-hmm. going to beat them. And if you got, like you said, if you can stop the run with five or six guys and the guys in the back can play man to man against guys, you're going to really have to shoot yourself in the foot in a number of occasions, to be put in a bad spot. Well, that's, that's And that's what I'm saying. I think Millville could stop the run without any additional help in a box. That's I think their front seven right, is just if, outstanding. If, if, well, <laughs> that's the number, right? Is the magic number, Can they, if they can do it with six and a half to seven, or is it seven and a half to eight? Because then you play, you know, you got to, now you got to put the seven and a half, eight in that box. You got some overtop RPO looks, some second level hits. But to your point, if Millville doesn't have to do that. <laughs> right. I, yeah, the, the, the key for me is just playing ahead of the sticks, right? You, you, you have to get those positive yards on first down. Right. I, it, it's a tough matchup um, when you can play that way. But look, you know? yeah. look at, the reason why we're talking about what the Shawnee need to do, because Millville it's just that is good. really, really, really good. Mm-hmm. And look, they watch them on film. Kids are watching them. They played them. You know mm-hmm. what they had. But we used to tell our kids in these type of situations, they don't got to beat Millville five out of ten times. They don't got to beat them three out of ten times. They don't got to beat them two, one. One time out of X, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, so as it's, it's high school football. So if you, you're in there, a little bit of house money, a little bit of Millville, you know? We'll, we'll see if they can do it. That's one thing for sure. That's going to be Friday night at 6 p.m. at Millville. Now, the other side of that bracket, Colts neck the three seed out of the short conference. They beat Toms River South 41-0, also out of the short conference last week. Chris Scully, 18 carries, 187 yards, four touchdowns. Eric Luario, Luario, eh, I'm not sure. A sack, tackle for loss, fumble recovery, and he blocked a kick. He did a little bit of everything for Colts neck. The Cougars, they head to Mainland. Mainland's undefeated. They're... 10 and 0. Everybody wants to see this mainland Millville matchup we've been waiting for, but we'll see if it plays out that way. Friday at 6 p.m. This is at mainland. 
Let me tell you what Mainland did last week. Uh, we talked about Burlington City earlier. How many guys do you think Colt next has to put in the box to stop Mainland's run game? Mainland was winning against Manalpin 49-7 at halftime. Uh, they won 56-20. Cohen Cook, 99 yards, rushing two touchdowns. Stephen Ordilly, 121 yards, rushing two and a touch, and one touchdown. John Francini threw for three touchdowns for the Mustangs. They welcome Colts neck. Uh, the Cougars, as both teams are green and white. Silver for Colts neck, too. Uh, Mac, mainland at this point. I mean, they, they they're are, chugging along, man. This is the collision, right? I mean, no offense to Shawnee and Colts. Like, we'll see what happens. But I think everybody. Well, yeah, the chalk says is, mainland Millville. But seeing what happens here. Well, and, you know, but I, like, I'll go back to what does Colts neck have to do to stop mainland's run? But you see, right? But Fran, Franchi, five for seven, right? 116 yards. This is like, uh, it's like, was it Rocky two or Rocky three where Rock's, he's fighting righty. And then, and then Nick's like, all right, go now go lefty. So. So Mainland's going to run, run. I guarantee they're calling their offense, calling their offense. And, and, you know, you got a young kid going, Coach, throw the play action now. Yeah. Throw the play action now. And then the guys on the sideline are like, not yet. Not yet. Boom, here we go. Bang. Right. You know, play action, five for seven, 116 yards. And they're, you're like, oh, man. We think we're kind of not stopping a run, but we're, like, bottling up a little bit, blah, blah, blah. But the Mainland's 49-7 at halftime. 49-7 at halftime. They have been the number two team in our rankings for uh, most of the season. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brian Hunter here says, Millville's defense versus Mainland's run game is what I'm hoping to see. There's a lot of people that feel that way. Strength versus strength. Unstoppable force. A movable object. But we'll see how things play out this week and if that if that holds true. Yeah, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's not get – we, we, well, like you we, say, we can. Let, we yeah, can. Let's, let's, they got to they gotta take care of their own business. A, a one yard is – has been haunting them for that's right a full mm -hmm. it's, been, year. it's been a long time since they met in the state <laughs> semifinals last year central jersey group five mac third seeded rancocas valley is heading to two seated washington township friday at 6 p.m i talked about washington township they didn't quite run out of gunpowder for the cannon uh, i think they'd probably refurbish this week just in case rv eight and two they beat lenape at home 13 to three they held the Tribe to 71 rush yards on 29 carries. They ran for 184 themselves. Bounce, rush attack, four guys over 30 yards. Nick Marco's late one-yard run sealed it. Uh, we talked about Washington Township in the first segment. If you want to go back and listen to their performance against Atlantic City, mighty impressive. Scored 36 unanswered. Mac, RV, what stood out to you about them? Well, a lot of different weapons, right? Quarterback knows, and a, and a quarterback's a weapon as well. He can run the ball, he can throw the ball a little bit. Um... You know, that game was, it was, if you're an RV fan, that, that game was kind of itchy in the beginning. Like, you, you know, at, at second, well, second and beginning of third quarter, RV's up 7 3, and Lenape fumbles. They, they, they get inside, the, you know, RV fumbles, fumbles off of their opening drive off of the third quarter. Lenape goes down, play action, get inside the five, fumbles, and then RV gets the ball and goes 98 yards and scores a touchdown and make it 13 3. I mean, and RV doing it with multiple guys that can run the football. Um, and they just enough combination with some slip screens, some, you know, just the, just enough to keep you honest. You can't load the box. You got to, you got to, you got to play them straight. And, you know, they, uh, they, they, they take advantage of some things. I want to, I want to look at this matchup from maybe not an X's and O's, but more an overall standpoint of, of these two, these two programs, uh, everybody has said Washington Township has so many kids, right? They've always had so many kids in the school, big school, great facilities. Coach Schatzman took over. It's like if he can get things rolling, you know, they could they could really bounce back. They we need Township to be good in South Jersey Group Five. That's a big deal. They're here. Mm -hmm. RV, same deal. It's like, how can RV be bad? They should always be good. They're a huge powerhouse program. They've got guys that played there that are better than played anywhere else all time. Dudes of dudes. Garrett Lucas takes over. Younger guy, great guy. Everybody, everybody likes Garrett. Everybody likes Mike. Mike, both times. It's like, I hope these guys can figure it out and get. And now here they are playing for a berth in a sectional final. And they're both love to run the ball and play physical defense. You got your Scavetta, you got your Malachi Castle, 
you got your guys who are between the tackle guys. But you, you, and these, this is going to be a fun game. These both these coaches know how you win games. See, this it's hard. You say um, RV is supposed to be Washington Township is supposed to be. It's getting over that first couple of years where you're like people want a little more flash and like you know I I, I bring it back to you know. I know people are, you go watch a Big Ten wrestling match. Go watch a Penn State, mm -hmm. Iowa State uh, National Championship <laughs> wrestling match. It's the same darn moves, man. Right. They're doing the same stuff. They're not, there's nothing fancy, right? You gotta, you gotta block, you gotta tackle, you gotta not turn the ball over, you gotta punt well, you gotta kick well, right? You, you gotta play sound football. And when you come in and take over a program, you know, sometimes, that's not sexy right away. Right. You know what is sexy? When you win. When you, yeah, and both both coaches have done a great job turning the program around. You know, a lot of times when you're down, the guys in your town, they're at another school. Right. Either, you know, right. a prep school or, you know, Catholic school, whatever. Sure. They're, they usually leave. And it usually takes a couple years. And one thing that I liked about Township was – um, one of their better D linemen is a freshman. Yeah, he's unbelievable. I mean, yep. he's a standout. He's really good. I'm not going to butcher his name, yeah. but <laughs> he's really good. Um, so you start seeing guys step he sta up. He stayed he's, home. Right. He stayed home. And then his, you know who stays home? His buddy stays his, home. Right. Then his buddy stays home. Mm -hmm. Right? We had, Look, I we, we, had, we, we had someone at our place in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. Well, let, let's look at it this way. Since RV has been good, since Lenape, when, when it was U2, um, with Township. Now, look at, you know, Williamstown has Take faded. It, right, a little bit. Kingsway and Cherokee every year, I think, in Group 5 are, are pretty good, solid programs are going to be there but yes for South Jersey group five I mean group four has been better than group five this year and last year top I mean in terms of your top contenders for South Jersey group five to be um, back to where it should be programs like RV and Washington Township need to be good programs right and to see this is encouraging that that we're starting to see the numbers grow we're starting to see the product on the field change and um yeah, I think it's going to be a great matchup, and, and I think either way, um, both guys, Garrett and Mike, are going to be happy for, for um, what, what has happened with their program and the guy on the other side. They're both mm -hmm. great guys. Um, this should be a good one. That's RV at Washington Township, Friday at 6 p.m. The other side of that bracket, you have the perennial favorite here, Tom's River North, 8-2, and two, like I said earlier. They are... Uh, I think everyone would say unequivocally right now the number one public team in the state in any group. They host Freehold Township, who's 7-3, and three, the five seed. This is Friday at 6 p.m. Toms River North rolled Southern in the first round, 49-7. Freehold knocked off unbeaten North Brunswick on the road, 21-20. So this should be a good one at Toms River North. In South Group 5, two teams we just mentioned, Kingsway and Cherokee. They're going to renew acquaintances, 6 p.m., Friday at the Bowl. Cherokee 7-2. Their losses came to St. Augustine and Millville. They beat West Windsor Plainsboro South 44-7 last week. Murad Campfield, nine carries, 99 yards, four touchdowns. Cooper Birdie, 50 yards receiving and a touchdown. Tommy Padgett with a receiving touchdown as well for the Chiefs. Kingsway, 6-4, and four, beat 100 and Central on the road, 27-14. It was 7-3 headed to halftime. And then Tommy Popoff turned into Johnny Manziel. 158 yards passing, a touchdown. He ran for one. Benny Lyles, 100 yards receiving. Kyle Cupsey had a sack and tackle for loss. 24 second half points for the Dragons as they win that one. They played at the Bowl October 13th this year. Cherokee won 34-7. Ryan Benner, the quarterback, ran 10 times for 196 yards in that game. He had four touchdown runs. Three of them covered 73 yards, 52 yards, and 63 yards. I think uh, Coach Hendricks um, Someone's gonna have an will talk about exactly have an, have not an crashing on, down on the, have, on the read there. Yeah, let, let's, uh, let's, let's have somebody <laughs> right. for, for, the, for the quarterback read. Popoff didn't play in that game due to injury. Uh, Kingsway, another team, a house money team, I think here, 
and playing Cherokee. And on the other side of that bracket, Marlboro, the three seed, out of the shore, heads to Hillsboro, the two seed, Friday at 7 p.m. They're out of the Big Central Conference. The Mustangs beat South Brunswick 26-16 last week, the Mustangs meaning Marlboro. The Raiders of Hillsborough beat Howe 14 to nothing. Cherokee, Kingsway, Mac, what do you think? That game was at Kingsway, not Cherokee. Right. Um, again, Mr. Popoff didn't play, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, again, when you're playing a team twice in a season, especially these teams that have been playing each other a couple times each throughout the seasons, throughout the playoffs, you know, um, they respect each other, but no love lost between programs when it comes time to get on the field, right? Um, this is a uh, this is where Cherokee becomes the, the Cherokee, right? You gotta you gotta come in and you gotta play in the bowl, and it's a, just a different feel. But I don't I, I don't think Kingsway's backing down anybody. Um, I think they're gonna clean some things up from the earlier matchup. I think they might even like a little bit that they kind of, you know, it's human nature, right? Yeah. To, you know, Cherokee sitting there going, guys, 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 just let's let's wheel it back in. We gotta. These guys aren't as, oh, coach, we dominated them. Yeah. I mean, they're not saying that out loud, but you're dealing with 16 and 17 year olds. I go back to the bigger purpose for Cherokee. Last couple times in the playoffs have not been up to their standards. Uh, they've been ousted early, uh, earlier than they're expected to be ousted if you're a Cherokee. And Kingsway has, uh, has reached some of the bigger heights here. They, they lost that game to Hillsborough in the regional championship a couple of years ago, but they won a sectional title at Tom's River North. I think they won that. Yes. Uh, this, is, this is not about Cherokee's last game against Kingsway for Cherokee. It may be Kingsway saying, guys, we, we're better than that. Cherokee's thinking, guys, we're better than losing before the sectional final. Like, we're, we're better than what we've shown the last couple of years. We're here to win sectional titles. We're Cherokee. Yes. We, and exactly, and that's the bigger picture for right. them. Right. Um, we're not here to make, be spoilers or be. No, whatever. we're not. Yeah, we're, we're not, not here, here to, to worry noise. about the last time. Yeah, 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 we're yeah. here to. Yes, we're here to be handle Cherokee. our business. To be Cherokee. Yeah, be Cherokee. Uh, Rod, I want to do our nod of the week here, man. We let's go down to Pittsgrove. We talked about Shalik, Dylan Sheehan, of Shalik. He gets it. Look at this. Big play for them against Audubon. Steps in front and takes it to the house. You know, we haven't had a Shalik knot this year. I don't think. And, and and it's a real knot. It is. Steps I'm, in front. Real I think knot. we're going to have some good ones this week. Not, not, uh, I think well, we're going to have some defensive scores. Um, if you got defensive, you don't usually. The, if you get a defensive score, you're probably winning the game. That's right. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> Rod's not sure. I, I'm, I'm not going to go on my soapbox. <laughs> I, I saw a team lose after getting five turnovers this That's past right. weekend. So I'm not getting it. <laughs> Listen, I, I didn't want to hit a personal nerve, Rob. I'm sorry. It's safe to say, don't make an assumption that the team's going to win. No, I, didn't, um, not, I didn't give the 99.9 <laughs> stamp. We're not done yet, folks. We still got to talk non public playoffs and our game of the week. Time uh, and a half tonight? Like a time, time and a half, half tonight, man. This is always the biggest show of the year is the playoff semifinal preview. We can go in depth on some of these matchups, and then next week we'll be able to break down these championship games knowing where these teams came from, who they are. Again, last week didn't have the show here in this format due to illness. So sit tight, non-public playoff preview, some parting shots, and our game of the week preview right after this. Welcome back, football fans. There are a lot of really good teams, and it's, it's just one of those times. It's going to be fun, man, and, I, and I've, I've been... There's a lot of style, a lot of speed, a lot of talent across the board. You know, he's that general out there that's that uh, and he can sling it and
This show is brought to you by our presenting sponsor, the West Jersey Football Coaches Association, established to promote, improve, and unite football in South Jersey. In less than three years, the association's created the battle at the beach and has dedicated itself to helping others. The association's donated more than $50,000 to date to provide scholarships through the National Football Foundation and the Touchdown Club of Southern New Jersey. This group has also donated to the charity Philly Faces, which helps those in need of facial reconstruction surgery. Thank you to the West Jersey Football Coaches Association for your sponsorship of the show. Non-public playoffs, Mac, let's start non-public A. We got eight seeded Paul to six at seven and one, host an undefeated Notre Dame, the nine seed at 10 and 0, Friday at 7 p.m. in Hanfield. Uh, this is actually a West Jersey Football League matchup because uh, Notre Dame is in the West Jersey Football League. Paul to six on a seven-game win streak. Their lone loss was to the second seed in non-pub B, St. Thomas Aquinas, a battle at the beach. Dom Santiago can throw it. He's got 1,500 yards passing, 21 touchdowns, and six picks on the year. Tyree Roan has eight receiving. Matt Moradic running back, 791 yards, seven touchdowns. He's also caught five touchdowns for the Eagles, who are looking for that first big playoff win. A.J. Serace, Rutgers committed quarterback for Notre Dame, 70% completion percentage on the year. That's real good. 1,600 yards. That's good. 23 touchdowns, one interception. What's his QB rating? Like 139.6? That's the highest, right? Or 150-something? His, his QBR is pretty high. Yeah. Uh, he loves throwing it to Michael Quinn, who has 761 receiving yards, 11 touchdowns. Gabe Winovich, Winovich can run it, 968. And 12 touchdowns. The Eagles lost last year in the playoffs to St. Joe Montvale, 45-13. Uh, the year prior was 42-7 to to Bosco. They're seeking that playoff win. The winner of this plays the top seed, Bergen Catholic. They might as well let it all hang out. Paul to six, better than they've been in the last couple years. Mac, look, Serace can, can sling it. Again, it's going to be cold, and Santiago can sling it too. So Paul yeah. to six has an opportunity here. Well, Dennis Sr. has been around a long time. Yes, he's, he has. He's been a part of some big defenses. I mean, I'm going to really... You know, he was the D.C. back in when Holy Cross was of the Holy Cross days in the 2000s, um, 90s, and all that fun stuff. So um, I'm not saying he's going to stop Mr. Serace, but, you know, they're going to put a plan together. Um, obviously, you know, 70% completion is not only – that's the one interception. I mean, that just shows you he's the poise. That's, that's, a, that's, that's pretty impressive. Um, Come down and see, you know, some defense and yeah. Can they run the ball? Right? Can right. they can they run the ball? If you're Paul Six, if you're Paul Six fan, of course you're gonna be there. You're gonna be there nice and early. Um, and if you're around the area and you're a Rutgers fan, you want to get a look at Serace. I mean, good opportunity to just go down the street there. This is also the we got only got two matchups in this bracket. The other one, we got the five seed St. Augustine at seven and two is hosting St. Peter's Prep, who's the 12 seed. Friday at 6 p.m. in Richland. Uh, St. Peter's Prep is 1 and 8. But they're not your grandfather's 1 and 8. Yeah, I was like, um, how are they 1 and 8? They, their only win was against the 13 seed Paramus Catholic by a point, but they've played the best of the best in that yeah. conference. I mean, we no, know I what it is. I know. They also played St. Joe Prep. They played a team from Georgia. Uh, they're very good. Jalen Klein at running back, Hassan Moore, top player. Uh, you know, they lost in overtime this year to Del Barton, who's the 2 seed. St. Peter's prep the Marauders, come down to Richland, and St. Augustine will ride, obviously, Julian Turney. Three consecutive 120-yard games for him, one of the best running backs in South Jersey. Seven total touchdowns in those contests. He has 1,000 yards on the year, 14 touchdowns. Paris Pratt, five touchdowns receiving. But the defense is a big deal for, for the prep here. Sorry, I always say the prep. For the Hermits. They're playing the prep also. Uh, ice them up front. We know about the big cat. Ugo and Wotete picking up D1 offers everywhere. Got three and a half sacks, seven, seven tackles for loss. Matthew Bonchak, Julian Jambuzi at linebacker, and Tristan McClear on the back end, Julian Onesti. Uh, St. Augustine here, again, uh, if they win this, you know, the next matchup would be Paramus Catholic or Donovan Catholic. And St. Augustine only lost by five to Donovan Catholic in the season opener. So a big opportunity here for St. Augustine to Maybe get past, if they can get past St. Peter's, you know, make, make a little run here. Make a little, make some noise. Yeah, on the back end too, Jackie Granaris, junior. 
Yeah. Number seven, doing a great, great job. Look, um, it's it's tough. You know, again, this is one where you give it, you got to remind your kids, yo, guys, this isn't one and eight. This isn't your normal one. I mean, you turn on the film, they're not. Yeah. You know. And I think they know that, right? Yeah. Because, you know, these you two know teams. You know we're dealing with kids, right? Yeah. No, well, that's true. <laughs> these are smart kids. Though, I, understand. <laughs> now, I understand. I understand. I understand that. 2019, they met 35 to 28. St. Peter's Prep won that at Caven Point. Uh, that's the closest St. Augustine has gotten to that final here in the recent years. That was the semis. They had upset Seton Hall Prep the week prior. Um, so they are going to get St. Peter's at home in that one in non public A. And again, that's Friday night at 6 p.m. Some good non public football down in Richland and in Haddonfield at Paul to Six as they host Notre Dame at. Uh, I'm going to make sure I get this right. Seven. Seven. The game's Friday night at Richland? Yeah. Man, that's a, you're talking about a bus ride. Did Richland make it at six? <laughs> Again, we say this every year. Six. There are states where you drive three or four hours for first-round games. So because you live in a state that's three hours long, it's a blessing. I mean, because I made that ride. Yeah, I, was, I made that ride. For I was very saying playoff game. Growing up in, in in Mississippi, being a ball boy, we used to take those rides. So it was, but it was a little different, you know. Yeah. Well, look, look, they do it. It's a little different. It's a little different. Yeah, 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 yeah. But an hour to uh, come on, man. They, look, look, they did. They, they do it in the public school they, where they do the, the south and the north, and that's how they split up the playoffs. They do it in mo all the sports. You know, the, the non-pubs are the only ones where they throw them into the geographic. They, they don't care, right? You could be up in Sparta, Warren County. You could be down I say snake the whole thing, man. Let's do it. What, one through 64. So what time do you leave? You got to, you know, you want to pull up. Or about one through what, 32. 4.30, 5 o'clock? Sure. Four, 6 o'clock game? Get out of school early, man. It's playoffs. Get out of Why even go to school? Get out, exactly. Get out well, of I, you, know, so you can take a half day. I, I get it. I, I don't know, understand how they allow them to have a 6 o'clock game. And guess what? There's state finals <laughs> that are going to happen on weeknights this year. Okay? Just so yes, you know Yes, there that. are. So, you know, whatever. Well, Somebody's yeah. going to have to get out of school early, play state championship or something, I would think. Yeah, that's fine. All yeah. right. Well, it's part of the curriculum. But I'm just saying, man, let's, let's just do it. Let's uh, snake it out. Yeah. How great would that be? <laughs> you know, he's like... I want to play teams six miles away. I want to go to Cherry Hill Mall. <laughs> Good game, man. We pick two teams. We pick four teams. Good games. Don't even get me started how they picked the playoffs in 1974. Don't even get me started. PowerPoint, PowerPoints, they didn't even exist. They were conversations. All right. Non they wanted the best four. Non-public group B. <laughs> we got one team in here. Uh, Holy Spirit, four seed. They're going to host Immaculata, the five seed, Friday at 6 p.m. in, in Absecon. Uh, Holy Spirit is 7-1. and one. Their lone loss came to St. Augustine. Ty Costabile this year at quarterback, a sophomore, 13 touchdown passes. And other sophomores, Christian Searles, I hope I got that right, and Amir Hicks, uh, they ran for 208 yards combined in their last game, which was two weeks ago, 24-14 against Kingsway. You know they're going to be well coached. You know they're going to be ready to go with Charlie Roman on staff there and Andrew Deep Squally running the show for Holy Spirit. They're the Spartans. They're hosting the Spartans. Immaculata out of Somerville. Uh, they're seven and two out of the Super Football Conference. Their losses are to Pope John and Weak Wake. The winner of this will play Red Bank Catholic, which is the top seed in non-public Group B. The Caseys are eight and one, and their lone loss came to Bergen Catholic. So, Holy Spirit. Um, Look, man, I mean, we expect them to be. They have been quietly one of the best teams in South Jersey this year. They've been in the rankings uh, throughout the season. They've handled their business outside of that 14 nothing loss to St. Augustine. Uh, you know, they just find a way, and I, I would think they probably are going to find a way in this one. Now, next week will be a really tall test if they get there against Red Bank Catholic, of course. But Yeah, I mean, this is not, this is not new territory for Holy Spirit. Not at this, all. Is, this is... This is what they're, as they say, this is what they're built for, you know. Um, the, only, the only new territory here is St. Joe isn't in this bracket. Usually we we yeah. got our Holy Spirit, St. Joe portion of the show is right. not Pub B. Right. And now it's just, just one of them. Correct. Uh, undefeated teams left in South Jersey. Shallock hosting Shore. Timber Creek 
host in Cedar Creek, Mainland host in Cold Snack. Those are the three undefeated teams left at South Jersey. I believe Tom Padgett is helping us out tonight, Rob. Why don't you show him here? We got Coach Tom Padgett. He is Jersey Gridiron Scout, the premier position training academy and college recruiting platform for all middle school and high school prospects in the tri-state area. Sign up for off-season, winter, and spring indoor position trainings for youth, high school, and college prospects from January to June at Mavericks Training Facility in Moorestown. Register for the Underclassmen College Showcase in May for high school prospects to be evaluated in front of over 50 colleges. Put yourself on the radar of college coaches. Families, you can be educated on the college football recruiting process and the timeline by partnering up with Tom and Jersey Gridiron Scout today. Check out his website, jerseygridironscout.com, for more information. Follow him on Instagram, Jersey Gridiron Scout, and on Twitter, at Coach Pajic. It's P-A-J-I-C. Tom has some players to watch for our Game of the Week. And our Game of the Week, I'm going to be one of many media people at Timber Creek as the Chargers host Cedar Creek in the Central Jersey Group 3 semis at 6 p.m. You going? I'm going to Ariel, baby. Yes. Here's the backdrop from Tom Padgett. Here's his scouting report. Cedar Creek offensively scoring 25 per game. They're averaging 340 yards per game with 34 touchdowns. They've had 20 passing, 14 rushing, pretty balanced. Scored over 33 points five times, and they've scored 50 twice. Amir Dunbar, sophomore running backs, run for 1,207 yards and eight touchdowns. Darius Benjamin, 595 yards receiving, five touchdowns. And Aleem Parks, 555 yards receiving, eight touchdowns. Billy Smith is the player to watch. Senior captain at quarterback, 5'11", 170. He's ranked number five in South Jersey. In passing yards, 1,774, 19 touchdowns. He's rushed for three more. Coach knows all about him. He's a heck of a competitor because... Billy has trained with Coach Padgett. He knows him. We had a front, uh, a close-up view of him, an accurate passer, a gamer, competitive. Timber Creek, on the other side, scoring 30 points per game, averaging 341 yards per game, 41 touchdowns, 21 passing, 20 rushing. Doesn't get much more balance than that. A little bit. They've scored over 40 points four times. Senior running back Chase Conway, 650 yards rushing, eight touchdowns. Karan Brookins, 532 receiving yards, seven touchdowns. Marcus Upton, 520 yards receiving and seven touchdowns. Those two receivers are both juniors. But the player to watch from Coach Padgett is quarterback Victor Okendo. We talked about him earlier in the show. He threw for 444 yards last week. Um, he's an athletic quarterback with a quick release. Look for him to get it out to his playmakers early and often for Timber Creek. It's a battle of the Creeks. Coach Padgett thinks this could even be like a Pac-12 game, like a high-scoring game. He says his over and under is 51 points for the game. What do we think? I got the over. He's saying no defense is going to be played. Last year they played, it was 28-7. Remember that. I'm going under. Under? You're saying over, 51 and under 51. I say, I say over. Well, I'll say this. I have seen the sod. At Timber Creek. Oh, all right. So you got a little. <laughs> it, and not since last year, but I have seen that sod. And if it has not been replaced, when it gets to this time of the year, uh, so, so we, the point total drops down a little <laughs> bit with that sod. And, and if that sod is Tommy, rolling, baby, hey, I think I'm going to say Tommy, under. Tommy, is, your, is the 51 really a 40? I think I'm going to say under. Is it a touchdown? Is it a 44? Nah, I'm going to say somewhere late 40s. Mm. The only thing I disagree with Tom Patrick on the, is this. Tom, I know you're watching. You're the best, man. Thank you for your support. You got to have a .5 here. We can't have a push. 51 and a, a half. 50, you got 51 and a hook. You got it. 51 and a <laughs> half. No, we're no pushes next week. Right. <laughs> Give us the number. Yeah. It, I'll tell you what. It's going to be a fun game. It's going to be entertaining. You know, as we said, Battle of the Creeks. There's going to be a lot of media there covering that thing, I think. I think so. I, I believe it's going to be a ton of media there. I'm going to be there. I know I'll be there. Which creek is going to rise? You're going to wear a hat? I'm going to wear this hat. That hat. This one. Right I'm bringing here. a hat, too. Oh. I'm bringing a hat, too. I'm bringing a big hat. <laughs> I'm not wearing a hat. Why would I wear a hat? I don't know. It's my thinking cap. <laughs> um, no, it's going to be great. 
this weekend's going to be great. The playoffs are the best time of year. I hope everybody gets out there, bundles up, be safe getting to where you're going. We got to thank Matt Zubak for his sponsorship. We got to thank the Officials Association, the Ed Meyer Chapter, Southern Chapter, I, for I, their sponsorship and all they do. Mac, we got to thank you. We got to thank Rod Quarantine. We got to thank Rod. We got to thank Tom Padgett, Studio B, D2 Sports Network here. Rod will hook you up if you have any podcasting or show needs. Um, I can't even rip the script today. It's too much. I, I man. can't it's, even. I can't even like you know Schwarzenegger phone book it. it right. I got. I got to like do it in sections. I'll tell you this: someone is going to wear the hat on Friday night, so, and we're going to be cut down in half next week at this time. We're going to be talking about sectional finals. Yes. This is the best time of year. Yes. Yes. It's like early Christmas. It's like a day later than Halloween. And it's my mother's birthday. So, oh, Mom, happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hats off to you. Yes. yes. She's not in the chat today. She's out to eat, and she's deservingly so. Thank you for everything. I love you. And let's go watch some football. Yes. All right. Fun weekend. Fun weekend, man. No turnovers. Play good defense. Defense travels. Run game travels. Cherry Hill Mall. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back next week, 7 p.m. See you then. Man, can't get enough of it. <laughs>